All right, so the number one request I'm getting on my Facebook, my YouTube, my Instagram, on my inbox, my inbox is lit. The number one request I'm getting is on. Number one request is on linear programming. And I'm a man of the people. So me being a man of the people, we're going to do some linear programming. So, as is the norm, before we go into the topic and do some solutions and past papers and things, I want to give you some tips or a crash course. So we'll highlight six things you should know about linear programming before we jump into the question. So the first thing you should know is what exactly is linear programming. In layman terms, linear programming is the question where we have lines defined by inequalities and you use the inequalities to select a region that satisfies all. Let's say we want everything that's more than the orange line, that's above the purple line, but underneath the blue line, that's this region. And from this, you select points, what you call vertices. These points, we use them in the ending of the question to solve something with profit or maximum or minimum. So that's basically linear programming in a nutshell. Second thing you should know is that linear programming, it comes every now and then. It doesn't come every single time in the exam. So I would estimate like maybe one in four times you'd see a question on linear programming. But... When it does come, it comes, it goes for a huge chunk of marks in question nine. So it's not like you want to not study linear programming. Not studying linear programming is like, it's like standing up with Jack and a low piece of Trump. You could get away, but you could get your Jack hung. The third thing you need to know to do is how to plot a straight line graph. So any kind of straight line graph, you need to know how to plot it. All right, let me go through the four types of so let me just hit you the four main types of equations you'll see in a question on linear programming. One, you'll see the traditional equation of the line, y equal 2x minus 1. So that line will look something like this. Right? So that's straightforward. To draw this line, simply plug in values of x. Quick values to plug in will be values like 1 or 0 and get the corresponding value of y. Do it twice. Connect two points. Draw your line. Simple thing. You should know how to do that. Another classical equation that they like to bring is y equal to x. y equal to x looks like this. The graph of y equal to x looks like a line that goes straight through and it corresponds. I'll show you what I mean. So if that is the line, one here would meet one on the y. So one on the x meets one on the y. Any number I have here, let's say I had the number 5. If I go across here, that's going to be 5. So that's how you plot this line because y is actually equal to x right so that's how it looks the third style of line equation of a line you see is something like this where x plus y is equal to a number x plus y is equal to a number obviously you could just plug in values of x and y to get it but if you see an x plus y alone is equal to a number a quick thing you could do is just con connect the two numbers like this the two numbers and the x and the y and this drawing here represents that line, x plus y equals to 8. Because when y is 0, x is 8. And when x is 0, y is 8. So you could just connect the two on that. And very quickly, the final popular line that you will see is the line where x is equal to 3 or y is equal to 2 or x is equal to some number, y is equal to some number. The line x is equal to 3 would look like this. This is the number 3 on the x-axis and you just draw a vertical line coming down to meet that tree. That's it. So any number, if y is equal to 2, this will be like 2 on the y-axis and you just go a horizontal line going straight across like that. That's your line y equal 2, x equal 3. Alright, so tip number 4. It's all about inequalities, right? So if we are using any of these inequalities, which are just greater than or less than, the line that we are going to draw will be dotted. Whatever line that we draw on our graph will be dotted for this style of inequality. If there's any equal, any inequality, the line is going to be solid because it means we are including the value that the line is lying on. The fifth point is to remember that when you you got your region and you could they would either tell you to shade the wanted region or the unwanted region. Let's say the access to shade the wanted region, which happens to be here, right? So this region, 
after at the ending of the question they, they are going to ask you something about these points generally they do right so they'll ask you to what's the maximum profit or what's the minimum value and they'll give you an equation so you're going to find the coordinates of each of these vertices let's say this coordinate was mm, two five that's a hideous two all right so two five this two and this five is going to plug into an equation and you're going to be able to work out stuff with that you'll do it for each coordinate and you'll be able to find your answer you'll see a very clear demonstration of this when i do the next video finally in a linear programming question the sixth thing i want you to remember is that you are guided along this question part by part so each part will guide into the next part um you can even look for clues down the question or on the graph that they give you they may give you a graph which they do they give you a, like they're doing that now they're giving you the graph with the equations of the line so you could just take those equations of that line and use that to get your inequality to if you're not because one of the biggest problem is finding out what is the inequality that you have to use so look for clues along the question i realize that linear programming questions are coming much easier as the years progress and my guess the reason for that is because the max the max the amount of max allocated is a little less so there's less marks for the examiner who is creating the question to create a, a long question. So what will happen is that they will guide you along the question to save time and marks and ask you things along the way. So I had to look years ago to get some really good questions for you and I'll do those questions in the next video.